Let's look at this example problem directly. In this example, we are given a structure with applied loadings. We are told that this beam is made of A36 steel and it is a wide flange beam. And we need to select a proper sectional shape for this beam so it will support the loadings safely. As you can see, this simple design problem is different than the previous problems we worked on. Instead of having a clean-cut answer, this problem is open-ended and we need to make a best judgment that's based on not only safety consideration, reliability, but also cost efficiency and other factors. Based on our previous study, at this point, we should be very clear that the key parameter in our consideration should be the stresses developed in the beam because of the external loadings. What kind of stresses are we talking about here? We learned that we have the normal stress caused by the internal bending moment, the bending stress, shear stress caused by the internal shear force, normal stress caused by the applied loadings, in this case, the 20 kilopounds and the 30 kilopounds of vertical forces, and in some cases, the beam is also subject to axial loadings, therefore there will be normal stress developed because of the axial loadings. In our example here, we don't have any. In general, in engineering application, for long and straight beams like this one, with a high span to depth ratio, the bending stress is the dominant factor in the strength of material consideration. The shear stress should be checked as well, but the other two normally are negligible. So as we've done so many times now, we start this problem with the free body diagram and then determine the support reactions. And then we construct the internal shear force diagram as well as the internal bending moment diagram. And from the shear force and bending moment diagrams, we can determine the maximum internal shear force is 27.5 kilopounds and the maximum bending moment is 110 kilopounds foot occurring at a location that is 4 feet measured from the left end. We are very familiar with this procedure, but the question is, how do we use this information to decide on a sectional shape for this beam? At this point, we should all be very familiar with the flexure formula as well as the shear formula. And if you recall, I used to rewrite these two formulas this way to clearly demonstrate that the stresses are caused by the internal reactions on the numerator and resisted by the combined geometric properties on the denominator. And since, as I mentioned, in general, the bending stress is dominant, therefore, we're going to define a new geometric property that combines these two, the section modulus S, which simply equals to I over C for a given cross section. And in the design process, we can derive from the factor formula that the required section modulus should equal to the maximum bending moment divided by the allowable normal stress. We determined these maximum internal reactions from the shear and bending moment diagrams, and we can look up the material property for A36 steel, and we will find that the allowable bending stress for A36 steel is 22 KSI, and the allowable shear stress is 14.5 KSI. Therefore, the required section modulus is defined again as the maximum bending moment divided by the allowable bending stress. So in this case, it is 60 cubic inch. Now again, the question is, how do we use this information to guide us in the selection of the proper beam? For that, we can refer to handbooks, brochures from manufacturers, or online databases. For example, a database can be downloaded from the website of the American Institute of Steel Construction, and this database includes the detailed specifications of almost 2,000 steel construction shapes. In this table, I am showing a very small sample from the database. The data listed here are all in U.S. customer units, but data in SI units are also available. The first column, as you can see, is the designation of the shape. 
W indicates a wide flange beam. Number 18 is the total depth of the beam in inches, and 40 is the nominal weight of the beam, 40 pounds per unit length foot. This is the total cross-sectional area of the shape, total depth of this shape, width of the web, width of the flange, thickness of the flange, area moment of inertia about the x-axis, section modulus about the x-axis, and lastly, radius of gyration about the x-axis. If you recall, previously we determined that in our design we need to choose the beam with a section modulus of 60 cubic inch. And for the four shapes I listed here, you can see that they all have the section modulus close to 60 cubic inch. And of course, you want to choose a section modulus that's higher than what's required. Therefore, these four shapes probably all satisfy the safety requirement. So now we need to consider the cost efficiency. Because of that, we want to choose this best one because it has the lowest nominal weight. Therefore, it is the lightest and very likely the cheapest. So we have decided on this W18 times 40 beam because it meets the requirement for the section modulus and at the same time it has the lowest nominal weight. But we still need to double check to see if the shear stress requirement is also satisfied. We have determined the maximum internal shear force and looked up the allowable shear stress for the A36 steel. We can do a detailed analysis to determine if the maximum shear stress developed in this section will exceed the allowable shear stress. But generally, a simplified approach will be sufficient since we know that most of the shear force is resisted by the web, not the flange. Therefore, we assume this is the total area of the web extending from bottom to top. We calculate this area, find the average shear stress, and as you can see, it is much smaller than the allowable shear stress. Therefore, our selection is satisfactory, and that concludes this design procedure.